Hi, my name is David Parker, and I'm here with my fellow Vizio MVP, Scott Helmers. Scott, we all know that Vizio can create relationships between shapes using connectors. Can you show us some other ways you can create these relationships? Absolutely. Vizio 2010 makes it really easy and much more flexible for me to be able to show visual relationships. And the trick is something called a container. I'm going to select all the shapes in the data center network down in the lower right part of my diagram, click Insert, click Container, and now I get a gallery of containers. And watch the screen as I mouse over them because there's live preview for all these different containers. I can choose the style in which I want to represent these containers. Uh, pardon me, to represent all these shapes and their relationships. So I'm going to choose this one. So far, so good. What if I move this thing? Well, let's drag the container off the page. Sure enough, everything goes with it. If I drag it back, everything follows. If I copy and paste it, everything will go with it as well. So that's a step in the right direction, but let's look at some of the other advantages of a container. What if I want to label this branch office network as being in, say, San Francisco? Over in the container, notice there's a built-in header. All I need to do is type my text, and there I have San Francisco as my header. And even better than that, if I don't like the way that looks, if I go to, if I select the, the container, a contextual tab appears, click on it, and now I have a way to change the container style. Or if I like the basic style, I can just click on the gallery for heading styles. And notice I can add the, move the, the header so it's in a different position entirely. And that's all done for me automatically. So it's a huge advantage, great way to show visual relationships. Okay, you've sold me on containers, Scott. Is there anything else you'd like to show me? Absolutely. Let me go to the second page in this drawing, and I'm going to show you a specialized type of container called a list. Lists are a special type of container. Not only does the list know what it contains, and not only do shapes in the list know that they are contained within the list, but every shape knows its ordinal position within the list which is perfect for my next example. In this scenario, I'm, I'm creating the start order for a cross-country ski race. So I've got my list over here that says start sequence, and then I have the, the racers, Smith, Jones, Ryan, and Welch. Now, ignore the minus one for just a second, but watch what happens when I drag this shape over to a container. First of all, notice there's some visual feedback. When I get near the container, the edges light up in orange, and when I drop it, the what was a minus one now becomes a one. So Smith is number one on my start sequence. If I drag Ryan over, notice I get some visual feedback. There's an orange insertion bar that lets me know I can position it above or below Smith. Let's drop him below Smith, and Ryan becomes number two. So far, so good. What if I want to add Welch to the list? Well, drag Welch over, and let's drop him in between. See what happens. Welch automatically becomes number two, and Ryan becomes number three, because these shapes do know where they're located within this list. And finally, drag Jones over, drop him at the top of the list. Everything is renumbered automatically. I don't have to do a thing. Now, this is possible because I used a text field to display the shape position within the list on the shape itself. Let me undo what I've just done and talk about that minus one. In these shapes that are blue, all I did was display the list position, and minus one means I'm not in a list. If you look at the green shapes to the right, you'll see that they look identical, except they don't include the minus one. I've just added one formula to those shapes to hide the value if it's minus one. But if I drop Smith in the list, he's number one. If I drop Jones in the list, number two. And all the same other things work exactly the same way. I can drag Wells to the top, and he becomes number one. Everyone else moves down. So there you have it, a quick overview of containers and lists. OK, that's not a standard Visio template. Is there anything in Visio which uses these lists? Absolutely. In fact, I'm going to start with an example that shows both containers and lists. The, the swim lane structure for Visio 2010 was completely rebuilt using lists and containers. And indeed, the overall structure itself is a list, and the, each swim lane is a container. And just to show that, I can take a swim lane, and I can drag it to a different position in the list. So I can move this one down here, for example. Notice the orange feedback. I see the insertion bar that shows me where I'm going to put this list. And similarly, if I want to add a new swim lane, one way I can do it is to drag a lane in from the stencil. I get the insertion point feedback to show me where I'm going to put it, and I just add that new swim lane, and it's right there in position. 
So this provides considerably more flexibility for managing your swim lane diagrams because it's so much easier to rearrange things and to deal with the structure of the swim lane. Now for another example is from the software and database category of templates available with professional and premium and this is a wireframe. So if you're a software developer and you want to build a, a new, to mock up a new user interface, you might use this wireframe template for this purpose. I've started by creating a dialog box. I've put a couple of shapes in the upper corner to represent the, some of the buttons that are typically in a dialog. Notice when I drag a new button in to the dialog uh, box, the orange borders around the edge show up to show me that this is a container. I can glue this shape on right here and I get a little pop-up because this is actually an intelligent shape that can take multiple forms. Click OK and notice it's now the maximize button. If I do that one more time I can choose button type and choose minimize and now my my buttons in the upper right look like a regular dialog box. And just to show you one more quick or one or two more quick things, I'm going to select a um, a list box. So I, in my dialog box I want to add a list box. So let's drag that over and drop it. This is actually a list and the text items here are the objects in the list. If I want to add a new list box item, once again I get that feedback so I can see that I can insert it at different points in and I, there I go. I've just expanded the size of my list. So here's another example of a way in which Visio uses lists and containers to help make your life simpler. That's good. I think what we've just seen is a good way of putting structure into your diagrams. Absolutely true, David. Mm. Thanks very much, Scott. You're welcome.